Hey, 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 what is up? What's happening? Ray Higdon here, excited to do another episode of Team Building Tuesday. Let's go. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're rocking and rolling. What's up, what's up? Yes, yes, y'all. Let me know you can see me here. Let me, can you hear me? Let me know that you can see and hear me. Drop me a comment. What's up, Jennifer's? What's up, Janet? Xenia, am I saying that right? Good morning. All right, Shelly, Kelly, yo, yo. Feel free to share. You know what? Uh, we should give away some stuff, shouldn't we? You're like, yes, yes, we should. Since this is Team Building Tuesday, let's focus on giving away some of our leadership books. How's that? So drop me a comment if you're game to share. If you click share, drop me a comment that you shared, and I'm going to give away some of our some copies of our leadership book. Um, these are uh, physical. We'll actually mail them to you, believe it or not. It's amazing. All right. Uh, Elsa Wintercorn gets one of our leadership books. Um, and if you're on Periscope with like a crazy name, like, uh, you know, Blueberry Shears, um, I, I, I can't really call you out because I don't know your name. So if you're on Periscope, if you're on Twitter and watching this, then um, you know, drop me your name. Say shared, and then drop me your name, so I can so I can know who to shout out. Because I would like to give give you give you a little shim shim. All right, okay, Shelly, uh, where to go? Simchison, Simchison gets a leadership book. And if I say your name, just shoot an email to support at higdengroup.com. All right, let's give away a couple more here. Jalene Shelton gets one of our leadership books. And Andy Goldsmith gets one of our leadership books. All right, so if I said your name, just shoot an email to support at HigdonGroup.com. And before we get started, uh, just a heads up, uh, this week we start adding ticket holders to the private Facebook group. Uh, where we're going to be dropping massive value, having contests and prizes and all kinds of fun and just killer training in there um, for those that have their ticket to Rank Makers Live. Now, Rank Makers Live is October 8th through 10th. <laughs> I've been saying 7th through 9th. It's 8th through 10th. Actually, for us, it's 7 through 10 because we have our client day the day before. Um, but um, Rank Makers Live is October 8th through 10th in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we are optimistic, fingers crossed, and hopeful that the pandemic will be contained by then. Uh, we do have a full contingency plan if it's not the case. Um, but right now, um, you can grab your ticket and we will take good care of you. Wait, hold on, where did it go? Who knows, it has a mind of its own. But uh, if you wanna check it out, rankmakerslive.com. We start announcing uh, speakers this week. We add people to our private Facebook group this week. Rank Makers Live, I think by October, y'all y'all gonna need a good event. And I think that we'll be open up and we would love to see you there, right? And obviously if you're, um, you know, we, we are going to listen to the authorities and we're gonna, you know, practice safety first. Um, 10 and two, and uh, we're gonna make it happen. But uh, rankmakerslive.com, we have a full contingency plan. There's there's absolute certainty that we are gonna run an amazing event. So FYI, there you go, all right. So let's talk a little bit about team building, team building. So one of the biggest, con or not one of, the biggest concept for team building and leadership inside of network marketing is the idea of culture. I don't like this, but I'm gonna change that. Pow. Okay, I'm like a little thick. <laughs> he likes his writing thick. <laughs> oh man, what's wrong with me? All right, so um, the biggest thing around leadership is culture. And a lot of people throw culture around and they think that culture is shooting out t-shirts and passing around beach balls and, and you know that sort of stuff. Culture specifically defined is the making of people to feel good regardless of their level of desire or level of result, okay? And how you do that. So this is the, you know, this is kind of the, you know, the idea of culture. How do you actually do that is by understanding the concept of the 80, 15, and five. And there are a lot of misunderstandings and miscalculations that come in around 80, 15, and five, and I'm gonna break it down for you. So the 80, 15, and five is for levels of desire, 
And so 5% of any organization, regardless of the, if the leader walks on water or if the leader is just a terrible tyrant, doesn't matter, 5% of the organization have an insane level of desire to make a $25,000 a month or more, okay? And, and it could be a million dollars a month, could be whatever, we just kind of lump 5% there. And um, 80% have a desire to make zero, believe it or not, zero to $500 a month, 15% want to make two to 3K a month. That's where they are desire-wise, that's where they are in regards to personal attempts at production. Now, this is not, okay, this is not, what's the not equal sign, right? Is that, that's it, right? Isn't it? I'm not a math whiz, but this is not equal to results. So some people will say, oh yeah, my leader's a five percenter, but that five percenter barely does any personal production. They're sitting on their check and that's not a five percenter. A five percenter, you know, because on based on their personal attempts at production, their attempts at personal production. And so um, some people hit $100,000 a year and they're, they got it made in the shade of lemonade and they, they lower their level of desire. So they lessen their level of attempts at personal production. Uh, some people hit a million you know, a year, some a million a month, whatever, right? It's rare to run into someone who is, uh, like Glenn says, a true 5% of for life. Uh, most people reach a level where they're like, you know what, this is good enough. You know, 100K a month, this is not bad. Um, and so um, most, most people aren't lifetime 5%ers. That's very, very rare. Um, and, but most people, 80% of your check, because maybe that hits home a little better, right? Some people are like, oh, what are these losers? Like, oh, what, don't they want more? 80% of your check, 80% of your volume comes from those that do not have a humongous level of desire. They like to belong. They like to be part of something fun. They like to meet new people. They like to, um, they, they, they just like to be there. It's kind of like the book club for them. They like to learn stuff and they like to come to events. And, and quite frankly, who's to judge them? Like I don't judge people if they don't have my lunatic level of, of desire. Like that would be very strange. What, what do you wanna make? Oh, that's it? <laughs> right, that'd be very strange, very weird. Um, now, most five percenters, when they, um, I don't wanna say understand it because many do not, but when they start to get a little bit of the concept, they're like, yeah, you know what, this makes sense. How do I get these guys to be these guys? And I'm like, well, that's math. Um, how do you get a number three to be a number seven? You, you actually can't, you can't force that. This is a percentage. This is how it's going to roll no matter what. And so it's not the, how do I get these people wanting more and doing more? It's how do I create a culture that makes this okay? Because it's not intensity that creates large teams, it's longevity, it's longevity. And so it is keeping people around the campfire longer so that they may catch a spark. And so your five percenters are lunatics. These are the ones most catered to. These are almost all of the speakers that will be on your company stages. Um, but the problem is they actually need the least. Now they want recognition, right? They like that pat on the back. They like the limelight, but they need very little instructions. You could give a five percent or bad instructions and they'll figure it out anyway. And you'll be like, how did they do that? I gave them terrible instructions, but they will go and make it happen anyway. Okay. And so 15%, they get a two to $3,000 a month. They're good to go. Like that's like cool to them. Maybe they have other sources of income, whatever. 80%, they're mainly there to hang out. They're mainly there to hang out. They're there to be part of the mission, feel good about it. Um, so this, we dive into deeper. If you Google um, Ray Higdon culture, you'll find like a 30 minute video where I really break this down. So feel free to check that out if you want. Um, but let me tell you, one kind of insider mistake that people make once they hear this concept, okay? So my engineer brains, right? I have some clients that are engineers. And uh, so my engineer brains, they'll see this and say, hmm, um, these calculations make sense. Uh, based on my hypotheses, I believe that all I can, all I will do, <laughs> I will beat the system, is I will just make three groups, right? And, uh, and these three groups, you know, with this one, I'll just be happy and I'll post pictures of animals and cat videos. It's going to be amazing, right? My 80 percenter is going to love it. 
This over here, I'm gonna, you know, I'll talk a little bit about work, but not too much, whoa. And over here, I'm gonna raise hell, man. I'm gonna go hard in here. I'm gonna be playing, you know, some white zombies, some corn, some Pantera, some Sepultura, right? I'm gonna be rocking out, right? I'm gonna pass out laggers to these guys because these are my fires. Here's the problem with that. Here's the problem, okay? And this is very, very common. I'm just gonna set up three groups. I'll do an 18, a 15, and a five. Um, the problem is, one, one of the problems is desires change. Desires change. So what you would do if you did this is you would create what is a one of the biggest problems in all network marketing companies and all uh, teams is you would create what I would call an arrival group. And an arrival group is when you're located into, you're placed inside of a group and there's no qualifications or uh, 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 temporariness to it, you're just kind of placed into a group and based on if you qualified or, or not or whatever. The big mistake most people make with arrival groups is they do it by rank. They do it by rank. And I'll, and I'll show you what that looks like both ways, okay? So my engineers that set up the three groups, they'll place people in here by rank, which although I do not agree with, I don't agree with it, is actually better than placing them by desire because how do you prove that okay so here's the long-term effects of this right here because I'm, I'm willing to bet that maybe you hear this and you're like well, i don't want to do three groups but uh i should probably have a five percenter group right my lunatics my my uh you know lunatics on pogo sticks let's make sure that we breathe fire into them and hellstorm and and, and brimstone right um and so here's the problem if you do it by rank, all right, and you have an arrival group that says, hey, once you hit diamond or crown or Tiffany blue or whatever, right, we're going we gonna to add you into this group. And this group has privilege. This group has amazingness. And it's just awesome. And so the problem is people that arrive in a group don't always maintain their level of desire. And so when they, um, you know, when you get these people into a group with no qualifications of staying in, with no qualifications of, of, you know, having to keep up a certain rank or keep up certain volume or keep up certain personal production, what happens, okay? What happens? You'll have some people in here that no longer have a level of desire for growth, so they become stagnant. And when they become stagnant, they mildew. And when they mildew, they become cynical and skeptical of all new ideas. So what happens is you add people into this group that are new up and comers and excited and they're fired up, ready to rock and roll. They come into this group and they sit and they run into a bunch of curmudgeons that have been there for years. Yeah, I hit diamond in 88. Yeah, you know, my check's been going down. They haven't personally produced in years. But they all of a sudden, because of the arrival group, because of the arrival group, they feel entitled, right? So let me let me tell you my, my opinion on this. And this is to my company owners on here. This is to my big leaders on here. Someone who does the work to earn a check, okay? Absolutely keep your check, right? You should continue to be paid on the work that you did. What shouldn't happen is that you have some kind of entitlement that we have to hear your opinion forever, even if you're not personally producing. You lose your right to sharing your opinion in any kind of meaningful way when you stop producing. Still get the check, still get the check, but we don't want your opinion. If you're not in the streets, if you're not in the arena getting your jersey dirty, then you should not be giving your opinion, right? We want the young bucks, we want the up and comers, we want the people that are, are in actual production to be uh, supplied with the ideas and supported with new ideas. We do not want your 1988 version of how you did it back in the day and how it's different from today, all right? And so curmudgeon's not allowed. Now, if you don't have an arrival group, you don't deal with that, but most people do, most people do. Now, what if it's by level of desire? What if you, what if you, and so, some people will do this and this cracks me up, man, this cracks me up. They'll go to their group and they'll say, hmm, 80, 15 and five, I'm cool, I'm cool. Well, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a 5 percenter hellfire group and uh, we're all gonna get lightning bolt tattoos on our neck. We're all gonna get, you know, rings that say Bala, shot caller, be very long rings, right? And, and so uh, we do it by desire. So they go to their group and they're like, hey, uh, hello group. Uh, hey, who's really fired up and really wants to make a lot of money? 
And so every Tom, Dick, and Harry, yes, right, 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 you like money, right? So they all raise their hands. And so you're like, wow, sweet. I had no idea that nine out of 10 people were five percenters. This is crazy, crazy math. And so you add them into this group and you start breathing fire, man. You're swooping down upon them with dragon wings, or, right? You're just tearing it up in there. Here's what happens, okay? Majority of them, if they're added into here with just a verbal, a verbal raising of hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I like money. I like to make money now. Make money now, now. Right? If you're just a, if you're just a verbal raising of hand, the majority of these people, they ain't five percenters, bruh. They're not five percenters. Okay, so they're going to come into here and be like, geez Louise, they want us to do a whole lot of work. I don't know why I'm doing so many Scooby-Doo impressions. I apologize. It just came out, and sometimes it does on Team Building Tuesday. And so they're going to come in here and say, good Lord, this DMO sheet is 57 pages. I don't know, right? And so what are they going to feel like? Disappointments. So you've taken someone from a group where they were fine just saying, hey, guys, hey, I'm here. I'm here, y'all. You took them to hell, hell and brimstone group, and they're like, geez, I'm a big fat disappointment. I don't like it here. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel nice. And so they start complaining. They start saying, is there any routine that's a little lessies, a little lessers? Okay. And so, and, and here's what else happens. Here's what else happens. Let's say you don't make a goofy ass post in your group saying, who like money? Who like lots of money in, in wallet and purse? All right. You don't make goofy ass, you know, post in your group, but you arbitrarily, you're like, you know what? You know what? I think, I think Tina's a roller. You know what? I, I, I think Jojo, I think he's a, a, a baller. Let, let's add them. So, so you kind of just arbitrarily pick who you think is baller shot caller, add them to this group. Guess what happens? Guess what happens? Some of these other people hear about this secret group and they're like, well, well why wasn't I picked? How come, uh, how come, I'm, how come I'm not in a baller shot? How come I don't got the rings, baller shot caller? How come I don't got that? How come, what, where'd y'all get, how come all y'all got that lightning bolt on your on your neck? How'd y'all get that? Oh yeah, man, the leader just reached out to me one day and said I was amazing and, and said that I was awesome and he liked me a lot and, and hated everyone else and just added me to this group. So I'm just like, cool, bro, cool, right? And so there's so many problems. So let me ask you this. If you went to, let's take a church analogy, all right? When 80, 15, and 5 is to help you understand your sermon, okay? It's not to have you segment your group. It's to help you understand how to deliver a sermon, okay? How do you deliver your sermon? So when you, you, those who went to church, once upon a time, there were gatherings and these things called churches and they would do religion things, right? Um, now that's of course outlawed and, and banned. And so, you know, forget I said that, maybe you don't recall. But um, you know, once upon a time, there were these things called churches and there's other names for them as well. Um, and people would gather within six feet of each other and listen to someone deliver a sermon, a pastor, a reverend, uh, whatever you wanna call it, right? And, and so um, did it ever, did you ever get seated according to how much you gave in the collection plate? Okay, those who gave $100, uh, y'all sit over here. We got a special breakout sermon for you. This breakout sermon is how to get to heaven twice as fast, right? <laughs> That'd be a scary title, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd be like, mm, what are we doing here? What are we drinking? Huh? And so um, it's, it's not a separate sermon. It's the same message delivered but you're delivering it with the understanding that there's different levels of desire. Now, does that pastor, does that reverend have maybe, you know, once upon a time night classes? Does, is there a way to go to, you know, whatever it's called, seminary school? I don't know what they're called, right? But are there offshoots, just like in the gym? Is there CrossFit? Is there a personal trainer? Is there racquetball? Is there, right? There's always resources for someone who raises their hand who self identifies and says, I would like to become a baller shot caller. I would like to reach the top rank in the company. I would like to blah, 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 right? So you can say, oh, great. Well, we have this resource over here because you raise your hand. The problem is either you pummeling the entire group, assuming that they're all at this level of desire, or you creating some massive amount of work for yourself and creating all these breakout groups, okay? Now, one thing that can help with this, temporary groups by qualification. 
by qualification. So the best uh, vaccine, I may have just gotten banned. <laughs> this, this video is probably not banned, it's probably removed. Um, but a great vaccine from an arrival group is a temporary qualified group. Hey guys, I'm gonna run a 10 day group. And if you wanna be in the group, bring in one customer. They know it's 10 days, right? I don't have to boot anyone out. Unlike their rival group, if someone gets stagnant and mildew and is there, eh, we didn't do that back in 88, and I wanna boot them out. But if I do, hurts their feelings, gives them a platform because they've been placed on this platform that they achieved 33 years ago. It, it places them on a platform of influence. So now people are gonna to listen to their message, right? But if I go to the group, or if I go to the big group and I say, hey, we're gonna have a, a temporary group, it's a 10 day run, bring in one customer to qualify to get into it. Now we can play babies. Cause they know at the end of 10 days, it's closing down, no problem. No hurt feelings, no entitlement. I should be in that group. No, you shouldn't because we had a qualifier, bro. You, you had to get one customer, uh, you didn't. So you can't be in the group. And so don't do this. Don't, don't do the segmentation engineer approach um, have one sermon, use the word if, if you want to build a business, fantastic. And if you're here just as a customer, uh, you're amazing. We love you. You're incredible. You're awesome, right? Make them feel good regardless of their level of desire or level of result. And so I hope that was helpful to you. Um, feel free to share if you have teammates that may need to hear this, that may need to, uh, maybe this will help them out a little bit. And uh, those of you, if you like this kind of stuff, you will love our event, RankMakersLive.com, October 8th through 10th in Orlando, Florida. We are optimistic, fingers crossed, uh, that the pandemic will be contained by then. Um, we do have a full contingency plan to have it virtual if needed, if needed. It's going to be awesome either way, but check it out, RankMakersLive.com. We are going to be adding people to our private group this week, uh, and we are going to be announcing speakers this week. And so I appreciate you so very much. Have an amazing day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.